All right, boys and girls, uh, ladies and whatever. But, uh, so yeah, we're doing a, another video like this because you probably can hear it, maybe not on this tin roof, but it is raining and you might be able to hear the wind blowing like a motherfucker outside. So there's nothing I can really do and ain't much else that's been up, but this is kind of a update me just rambling on and talking but the biggest I don't got really anything new to update you on still just kind of got the just kind of waiting on phone call back I guess and other stuff on that dairy but we'll see I mean but yeah so um so let's uh keep rambling on shall we so anyways What to ramble on about other than just kind of trying to get some other ducks in a row right now. Like, I'm kind of just, I'm not really putting plans into motion, but I kind of have like a plan B going as well. But it's just kind of, I'm not jumping on that plan b till i know for sure what's going on with the dairy farm whether i can get that off uh, that. so it's just kind of a patiently waiting game at this point which is not fun and but we'll see and then um also But, oh yeah, so sitting on the CA, which that is actually the thing I got to bring up. So if I can put the pictures in, which if I can figure out how to do that, this thing has a tendency to pull to the right a little bit when you let go of the steering wheel, which a lot of tractors do that anyways. But this one, even you can let go of the steering wheel and it will head straight to the right. And it's not just because of the play on the steering wheel here. And you can feel it when you're holding the steering wheel, you kind of have to hold it this way up to the left just a little bit to keep it going straight down the road. But what I have what I have determined, or I think it's from, is that my right side, uh, the, the spindle that dropped, not the spindle, the, I can't remember the name for it, but anyways, the part that dropped down in your hub, yeah, the spindle, that's what I'm, yeah. The spindle but the spindle that drops down from your uh, arm well my grandfather he when he lived up to his camp there he decided he was gonna do maple syrup and in that first year he did it yeah when he had, was tapping the trees and my cousin would boil the sap before they built before he had his uh, uh, the boil the whatever you want, the evaporator built. He uh, had a set of half tracks on the CA here and used that to, uh, um, what was the thing I'm trying to think of? He used that to uh, go collect the sap and well, I'm, and his trails weren't exactly meant for tractors, they was more or less meant for the woods roads he was taking it down was not really meant for tractors because they weren't nice and clean and smooth. They had rocks, they had stumps in it. So you know, you you was, so I'm assuming he bent it back. And I mean, I would show you on the camera. Well, actually, I probably will show you. Cause, but I don't know how well you'll be able to pick it up in the video. You can see that, how much that's bent forward, and if, if I can do it, and you can almost tell from looking at 
the bolts, the nuts of the bolts right there off the end of my finger. You can see how those ones are kind of more straight out and these ones, if you look at them just right, you can see that these ones are kind of down a little bit. And if you look up here, you can tell that it's bent. And you all, and I'm also like 100% certain he definitely did hit something because that's bent that way and up because it's not supposed to be like that. And look at this one in comparison, which again, I don't know how well you'll be able to tell on the camera. But yeah, so he... He did a number to it. And all I can say, he was not fucking around when he, but so there's going to probably be so it's not going to keep the Y front because, I mean, I could take it to a mean sh machine shop and have them straighten it out. But to be completely honest, that's bent and you're never going to get it back the way it used to be. You're always going to have an issue. So. So I'm just going to say fuck it, put the narrow front end on it, get it done and over with, and the narrow front's on it. And then... I'm said and done. And then I also got to put a new tire on this side. Well, not new, but a new used one because that one's about bald. So you hit a wet spot or anything, the tractor spins out. But then I got to go through and take the hand clutch out of my parts CA and take this one out and hope I can re uh, put both of them together and make one good one that will work in this tractor because I'm pretty sure, I know this one's slipping. It's been slipping forever when we, we could never tow hay wagons with it because the way we used to have to go up in the barn, of course, the ground was never level with that barn. To get out on the road from the barn, you had to go up a hill. And then if you come in from the back side of the barn, up out of the field with it, you had to go up a hill. And this tractor never liked pulling hay wagons. And if we did pull hay wagons with it, it they were either empty or loaded light and probably hooking onto the old uh, Schultz spread master manure spreader that my grandfather used to have which i'll throw a picture in of that probably hooked to the d17 we ran it behind this for a few years there or, well i think a couple summers but so i mean yeah it's probably and i'm really hoping it's just like an oil seal that's went out the seal that's went out then i can just put a new seal in it and soak the hand clutch and brake clean clean all the oil and shit off it and it's good as new but that's what i'm hoping for and then yeah so this tractor just got some stuff it needs done so narrow front's being put on it tire hand clutch and i gotta put an alternator on it because right now it's still running the generator with a 12 volt battery and i need to take and take the six volt generator off put the alternator on because right now the way it's running is so I don't blow the burn up the generator. I have all the wires unhooked so the battery's not charging, which is a no good thing. But as much as I've run it, started it up and run it as much as I possibly could, the battery's been pretty good. It's a brand new battery. So, and then probably going to have to split the tractor at some point, put a new ring gear on the flywheel because this one, you pull it, it grinds. So I think I'm gonna need a new one. And I think this one's already been flipped once. So I gotta do that. And then, anything else? And then, oh yeah, I'm planning on at some point, I don't know whether, it, it won't be this summer, cause that, but the WC probably, maybe it might, it's not 100% yet, that's what I'm gonna do, but maybe the fall, I'm gonna tear it apart and do a complete ruster, well, restoration because, uh, well, three people have got me kind of encouraged to do it because I see it. I've been seeing it. Uh, There's a YouTube channel called Just a Few Acres. He does all types of farm all tractors. 
he runs farm all tractors and he's only in New York, but he's restoring an MD, his father's MD. And I, and he's kind of got me encouraged to start doing that to the WC. And then obviously Toby there, Squatch, whatever you want to call him, or Peck Ahead, whatever, you know, we want to call him. Of course, doing the Super M and then Kenny doing his H and then, um, Farmer Pete there doing his uh, WD-45. So I've really kind of wanted to do my WC up because that thing really could use it, restoration, because my cousin, when he start, when he still owned it, they started painting it because the prime, the grill is obviously the front, the, gr the front cowlings painted uh, primer gray. And then the old steering shaft I had on it, the old steering wheel, that I had on it, which it's got a different one from what it has now. The steering shaft was primer gray, and then the frame rail on the uh, uh, be this side of the tractor from the seat. The inside of that frame rail was painted gray, which don't even ask me about that one when they had it torn apart. So it's got primer. It had primer gray on primer gray. It's got red and three different colors of orange. It's time to get that thing all one color make it look snazzy and course and I did the pricing out I'm not sure if three gallons of paint will be enough but the pricing I did it come up a lot cheaper than what it mostly does which I'm really hoping that the number I wrote out will be good enough which was like four hundred and fifty dollars which that will be nice and cheap if I can do that and that was for buying a used hood buying new front tires and I uh, and all the other stuff I was gonna buy for it like I was gonna put lights on it and uh, what else was I gonna do to it um, there's something else I was gonna do to it that it needed to be done oh yeah I was gonna put a PTO on it just so I have a PTO which the hood that I was gonna buy off my cousin who I bought the tractor off of me and him have been into the whole trade and tractor parts and back and forth but so yeah hopefully i'm hoping that i can do that because that tractor really deserves it because i was going to do my d17 up you know put her back the way she's supposed to be because that that's what my grandfather wanted to do to that tractor and he just you know it needed to be painted but not as before he painted it with the paintbrush, it needed to be painted, but not that bad. It was actually still in really beautiful shape before he did that. And then he, of course, I would have been fine if he did it with a rattle can or something, or one of those foam paint brushes, because then it would have made the paint look nice, but he used a regular paint brush so you can see all the lines and stuff in it, which I'm not against it. It preserved the tractor a little longer, but still I'd like to just make it all, you know, you know sand it down fix all the dents and shit in it put all new gate you know i mean i want to make the tractor look good you know new tires new paint fix a lot of the things he's cut apart and torched on it which i think there was somebody actually that commented on the video one of my videos of walking around it that said all the stuff your grandfather did to it you know you'll hate it when you get rid of all that stuff you know you take it all off and get rid of it you'll hate it when you do that and it's like well no no i won't but, so yeah, so definitely the WC is high on the list. And then the next one down is the D set. Well, my WC is first on the list. My, uh, the CA actually should use some touch up because my dad painted this. Hell, I know I was, I remember the day we bought it or went up to go look at it at our, a family friend's place the tractor was yellow and my dad painted that tractor this thing so it needs it again because a lot of the paint starting to chip off like because i mean we we pulled it at the tractor pole a couple times antique tractor pole and then it mostly got used on the farm behind that tether that my dad owns because let me tell you something having this hand clutch for that tether was so nice you could you know if you get to a thick clump of hay you could pull that hand clutch back and let the tether run and kick it out, spread it out. Nice tractor. And I need to do that, And but yeah, this tractor is definitely on the 
I need I want to just touch it up because it really could use one and but yeah but the WC is definitely the highest one on the list that I want to restore then the D17 and make that all look beautiful again but the CA if anything the CA would be first just because that would require probably just a couple cans of the, the just a couple spray cans and just touch it up clean it up make it look good and then the and and you know and, but that all depends on because most likely if I'm gonna do that to the WC or my D17 I'm most likely gonna have my dad help me because I haven't really done a took on a big painting project like that and I mean I kind of want to just see how well I'll do but I'll definitely have my father there to help because he he's done the D14 he's done this he's done our he's done his Alice B that we have and then we he did the, the other Alice B which my uncle well uncle owns that my grandfather used to own he's done that tractor this tractor his D14 his B I think there was something oh and then he also did uh, my the, the 160 which so yeah so he's but so yeah and what else was I gonna say um, 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 um. yeah Oh, and, oh, well, we got plenty of time, but it's only 17 minutes. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I have up on the list for fall stuff and winter stuff. Hopefully, if anything, the CA will definitely be first because it just needs touch-up here and there and some stuff done to it. But the next tractor on the list would probably be the d17 or the wc it all depends on because my because if i do do if if i have my dad's help it will be done in his garage because he's got all the stuff and it would save him from going back and forth so yeah because if he well because where he's getting up to retirement age he'll probably start because i know he's thinking about doing my grandfather's alice see that narrow front C and I'm pretty sure he was thinking about doing that one and I'm pretty sure he was also thinking about either doing the I-40 or the other the wide front C maybe the I think there was another tractor and I know he thought about doing the D-15 even though that's in really nice original condition but Yeah, but all right, I'll be right back. 